The third pillar of the soccer player evaluation development sheet really goes around the physical attributes. And those physical attributes can be seen here. We're going to talk about each of these, although these are probably things that need less explanation than the technical and tactical attributes. But we'll go through the physical aspects so that you can correctly rate yourself from one to five in each of these areas. First is soccer fitness. Soccer fitness means being in shape specifically for playing soccer. This includes having good cardiovascular health, which helps you to run up and down the field without getting too tired. Focusing on soccer fitness helps you perform better during games and enjoy playing more. Soccer fitness really involves short sprints, being able to get up down the field for maybe a longer sprint, but it's not always necessarily running nonstop. So one of the things that can often be done is someone thinks that cross country or long distance training is ideal for soccer fitness when it really isn't. Sprinting is one of the best things that can be done uh, to develop the right type of soccer fitness and doing it over long periods of times. Not just two or three sprints, long progressive successions of sprints will make that preparation for soccer fitness that much more effective. Next we have is speed. Speed is all about how fast you can move, whether sprinting to catch a pass or racing back on defense. Being quick helps you to get ahead of opponents and create scoring opportunities. You can improve your speed through drills and practice, making you a more effective player on the field. So a lot of the things we do with speed and agility training during the off season with Coach Marcus, those are the types of things that we want to see to enhance speed. Agility. Agility is your ability to change direction quickly and smoothly. In soccer, you really need to change direction very efficiently, being able to dodge defenders or pivot to make plays. Working on agility helps you stay balanced and responsive, which can make a big difference in your performance during games. So being able to change directions and do that quickly and effectively in all directions is really what agility is about. Power combines strength and speed. It's what allows you to kick the ball harder, jump higher, or tackle more effectively. Building power through exercises like jumping and sprinting helps you make those impactful plays that can turn a game around. Another example of power is doing the hill sprints. Hill sprints are very effective at developing power in the legs to create leg drive and high knees to be able to push your body forward in directions with a lot of power. Endurance. Endurance is the ability to keep going without getting tired. In soccer, matches can be intense and require to you run for long periods of time. Building your endurance means you'll be able to maintain your energy levels throughout the game, allowing you to contribute effectively even in final minutes. A lot of times endurance has a lot to do with the foods that we eat. So making sure we fuel our bodies with things that help us to have energy in the 90th minute of the game or in our case in the 60th minute of the game. So having things in mind with how we eat really impact endurance and that's one of those things that probably we don't do as much of a good a job when it comes to middle school in terms of nutrition and really focusing on things that help us with our endurance. Strength. Strength is about how much force your muscles can exert. And in soccer, having strength helps you hold your ground when battling for the ball, shielding opponents, and executing powerful kicks. So it's very comparable to what we would consider as power. Incorporating strength training into our routine can help improve our overall performance on the field. And the last is balance. Balance is your ability to stay steady and controlled whether you're dribbling the ball or challenging for it. Good balance helps you avoid falls and maintain control because oftentimes you're going to get hip checks or shoulder tackles or things like that, um, especially when you're making quick movements and somebody's trying to defend you. So practicing balance through specific exercises can enhance your performance in games. And probably one of the best areas of helping us with balance is through practice. The things that we do in practice will really help and we can work on em emphasizing those away from the game. So in summary, these physical attributes are key to becoming a successful soccer player. Soccer fitness, speed, and endurance help us perform well throughout matches while ability and balance allow us to navigate the field effectively. Power and strength give you an edge in making impactful plays, and by focusing on these attributes, you not only improve your skills, but also build confidence in your abilities on the field.